Good morning, this is Mrs. Shannon with Cycle 3, week 23. So only two weeks to go, which is crazy. Um, we're gonna start with English. So we are doing the four sentence structures, simple, compound, complex, and compound, complex. So like I've shown the other weeks, I made these books for each of the kids in my class, and it's kind of hard to see they're yellow, but I wrote out four sentence structures, and then I left a little open rectangle um, where the first letter of each one goes. So you could have them just write the first letter of each of these, or you could find little letter stickers, which I haven't done, but I'm planning on because just something different. And they can find um, the letter, you know, S for simple, compound, a C for compound, etc., and put those letters in. Or you could have them write them, whatever you want to do. But I like them to have writing practice each week since I have younger kids, four and five year olds. So they're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna teach them a song to the tune, Who Built the Ark? So it goes like this. Four sentence structures, simple, compound, complex, compound, complex. Four sentence structures, simple, compound, complex. Compound complex. So also there's hand motions if you want to add those in too. You can for simple, you can, I'm gonna put my hand up here because you can't see, but you can put your hand on your belly and then compound, pat your head, complex, rub your belly, and compound complex, try to pat your head and rub your <laughs> belly at the same time. So you could also, you know, have them sing the song and try the hand motions at the same time or do one or the other. Um, I also thought it would be fun after they have a chance to write the first letter of each of these in their books to say, okay, now each of you gets to choose a hand motion to do and we have to guess which one you're doing. So, you know, if they choose to rub their belly, say, oh, what does that mean again? Do you remember which one that is? <gasps> Complex, that's right. And then have another kid choose a different one to do and then the other kids guess which one they're doing like oh what was patting the head oh compound that's right so just to give them a little practice with that changed up a little bit and then i like to give them a sticker at the end to put on the front of their books so this week I'm, i found these truck stickers at target I'm just going to give them each one and they can put it on the front of their books and then um, next week will be the last week and they get to take their books home with them so they'll have lots of stickers on the front of their book by the end. So that is English this week. For a timeline this week, I have put the first letter of each event on my timeline cards. I got these cards from the Classical Conversation bookstore and these letters from the dollar store. I like to put the first letter of each event on the card just because I have little um, kids, four and five year olds, and it helps them identify the cards. So I'm going to have seven pieces of painter's tape up on the board or the wall where it's really visual for the kids and um, or where they can see it really well. <clears throat> and then I am going to have a number in each of the four corners of the room. So I just put these numbers in different colors, laminated them. I'm going to stick them in the four corners of the room and I'm going to divide my kids up to stand in each corner. Um, and then I'm going to roll this dice that I have. And if it comes up with one, and obviously I, have, I only have four corners, so if I get like a five or six, I'll just roll again. But, so if I get like one the first time, then I'll say, okay, I need, um, you know, one of the people in corner one. So if there's two people in corner one, I'll just pick one of the people first and say, okay, it's your turn to put the first timeline card up. So our first one this week is Age of Information and Globalization. So I'll give it to them, they'll go stick it on the first spot on the wall, and then we'll go over that motion with each other. So we'll say, okay, age of information, you pretend you're typing on the computer, and globalization, you make like a circle for a globe. So then I'll roll my dice again, and say I get a two. Okay, so who's in corner two? Okay, I'm gonna choose one of the people in corner two and have them put the next card up. Watergate President Nixon resigned. So that one is I'm gonna have like a wall and two little eyes that are peeking inside the building and spying. Watergate and President Nixon resigns. So that um, 
And so we're gonna do for timeline. And then once we, once we put all the cards up on the wall, I'm gonna have the kids come and stand under the cards and we'll go over the motions kind of to the tune of the music together. So um, the first motion I did, Age of Information and Globalization, and then Watergate, President Nixon resigns, and then Fall of Communism, gonna punch the air in Eastern Europe, gonna make an E like this. And then European Union formed, so European again, and then Union formed. And then Apartheid abolished in South Africa. So I'm gonna bring my thumbs together like this, Apartheid abolished. And then I'm going to go, um, like, sorry, together and then like abolishing it in South Africa. And then September 11th, so one hand up, two hands up, and then fall down. And then rising tide of freedom goes rising tide of freedom, rising tide of freedom again. So those are the motions for timeline. So I'm gonna do for a timeline this week. For geography this week, we are talking about the first few prominent features in the United States. So I have these highlighted here. Um, we're gonna actually go over all of them to some extent, but I'm just gonna have the ones from this week circled on their map. So we have the Grand Canyon that is circled in blue here. And then we have Black Hills in pink, Ozark Highlands in orange, Okefenokee Swamp in green down in Florida there. And then Olympic Rainforest up here in purple. And then Niagara Falls got erased, but it is right over here. So um, I'm going to prep their maps with those kind of circled so they can see what they are. And then what I'm gonna do is I have pictures of all of these prominent features I just kind of searched online. Um, so for example, we've got San Andreas Fault and Grand Canyon, so that's just a few of them. But I found a little picture of Black Hills of each one. And so I'm going, we're gonna go through them and I'm gonna have them just, I'm gonna have painters tape somewhere else on the wall and have them, have a kid stick one, there's Niagara Falls, stick one on each piece of tape as we go through them. And there's a little hand motion we're gonna do for each one. So um, the first one, Olympic Rainforest. So again, I'm gonna go over all of them for this week and next week. And because our song we're gonna do goes over all of them. And then we'll, it'll be kind of review next week and we'll look at them specifically, the other ones on the map next week that we don't do this week. So Olympic Rainforest, we're gonna act like it's rainy. And then San Andreas Fault is where there's a lot of earthquakes. So we're gonna like do karate chop, like And then Death Valley, like I'm gonna cut our neck kind of like that. Don't do something so gruesome if you don't want to. Um, <clears throat> Grand Canyon, we're gonna go Grand Canyon, like echo. And then Black Hills, there's lots of gold, so we're gonna act like money. And then Niagara Falls, we're gonna act like we're going down a waterfall, so we're gonna put our arms up and go wee. And then Ozark Highlands, um, we are going to make an O for Ozark. And then Mammoth Cave, we're gonna cover our mouth and go Mammoth Cave, like we're in a cave. And then Okefenokee Swamp, we're gonna act like an alligator, like chomping like an alligator. Mississippi River Delta, we're gonna act like we're paddling through the river on a boat. And then Gulf of Mexico, we're gonna go, ole! So we, um, and I got those ideas from Happy Learning. So I like them, I think that'll be fun. It'll be fun for the kids to do them. So I'll sing our song and what you can do is have the kids kind of like practice the um, hand motions as we sing our song together. So it goes to the tune of I've been working on the railroad and it goes like this. What are the U.S. prominent features? Olympic rainforest, San Andreas Fault, Death Valley Grand Canyon, Black Hills, Niagara Falls, Wee, Ozark Highlands, Mammoth Cave, O'Keefe and Oki Swamp, Chomp, Chomp, Mississippi River.
River Delta, Gulf of Mexico, Ole! U.S., U.S., U.S. prominent features, U.S., U.S., U.S. prominent features. So that is geography, and I think it will be really fun. Um, again, so we're going to sing that whole song this week, and then just go over the ones from this week on our map, and then next week focus on the ones from week 24 on our map. And I usually, depending on time, let the kids kind of have some dry erase markers and color in where those locations are. And then depending on how much time we have, review kind of what the states are around those um, prominent features. That's really good review. What are the capitals of those states? What mountain ranges are around those? I mean, like, the sky's the limit on what you can do depending on your time. So that is geography this week. For math this week, we are talking about the distributive law. And we're gonna learn a little song to the tune of Be Careful Little Eyes What You See, and it goes like this. The distributive law states A times open parenthesis B plus C closing parenthesis equals A times B plus A times C. The distributive law states A times opening parenthesis B plus C times closing parenthesis equals A times B plus A times C. And I'm going to use these silly boy sticks that I've made, I've shown before. Um, so you have like pouty or um, slow like a sloth. I just made these popsicle sticks, colored them and put different words on them, scared. And they love them. So we're going to sing the song with these different voices. So I'll let each kid choose one. And for example, like, Pouty and say, the distributive law states A times opening parenthesis, B plus C times closing parenthesis equals A times B plus A plus times C. So um, I'll let them each do that, and that is math this week. For Latin this week, we are continuing to translate John 1, 1 through 7. We're doing John 1, 7, so ut testimonium prohibit de lumine to give testimony of the light. So on my board, I have it color-coded, the Latin with the English, so the Latin that coordinates with the English. So like, ut testimonium will be green, testimony will be green, prohibit will be pink, to give will be pink, day will be purple, of will be purple, lumine will be orange, the light will be orange. So um, just to show them which Latin coordinates with which English. And for our class, we are presenting this in front of the parents at the end of the year ceremony. So I'm working hard with my kids um, to learn the words and the hand motions. And I have a girl who's a little bit older than the rest of the kids in my class. She's seven. And so I have her be my special helper and sit beside me and do the hand motions with me as we sing. And the younger kids kind of watch both of us as they do it too. So they like watching her, it helps, and she likes being a helper. So um, so for this week, Oot Testimonium, we'll um, sing that with making little glasses with, for our eyes. And then Lumine will go like this um, for light. So I'm gonna start at the beginning. This is what I'll do with my class. And we'll sing down until this week's verse. So um, I will do my best, but I will link below where I've get this um the video i watch on youtube to get this part and you should watch her because she's really good so here it goes in principio era where boom in the beginning was the word at where boom era a pedeum and the word was with god at deus era where boom and the word was God. Hokara in percipio a pudeum. This was with God in the beginning. Omnia per ipsum fact assumed all things were made through him. Et sine ipsa factum est nihil. And without him nothing was made. Quid factum est that was made. In ipsa vita erat, in him was life, 
and weep to air brought Luke's homey noom, and his life was the light of men. At Luke's antenna, breeze flew cat, and the light shineth in the darkness. A ten of bright am known comprehender rent, and the darkness comprehended it not. Fuit homo, misusa deo, there was a man sent from God. Cui noem et nomen erat Johannes, whose name was John. Hic venit in testimonium, this man came for a witness. Who testimonium prohibit illumine to bear witness of the light. So that is our Latin. Again, I would watch her video because I am still working on this too. But that is, what, and we're not going to do like silly voices or actions or anything. We're just going to work on the, um, the words and the motions. So that is Latin. For history, we are talking about the preamble to the U.S. Constitution. I found this big preamble um, from the dollar store. So I'm just going to hang this up on um, the wall somewhere in my room. Or, you know, you could just print out a preamble or don't have to do this part. But um, I'm going to have that on the wall. And then we're going to listen to the Classical Conversations history song. I have these light up wands that um, I found from Kohl's, I think, but you could also probably find them on Amazon. And I'm just gonna give each of the kids one and we're going to march around the room as we listen to the song. And then um, at the end of the song, each kid gets to hit the preamble with their little wand, um, just for fun. And then I'm going to give them this coloring page and depending on time, I might give them a few minutes to start coloring it as we listen to the history song a few more times. Um, or if we're kind of short on time, I'll just send it home with them. But I get this, these from Etsy, from Designs by Amy, I'll link below where I find her stuff. Um, I also have a science one I'll show you too and a math one I'll show you, but love these and I like to send them home if we don't have to, time to do them in class. So that's history this week. For science, we are talking about what are some ways Earth's history is preserved. And so I have this printable from Kimberly I'm gonna put on my board. I will link below where I find her stuff. I also have this um, coloring page from Etsy that I'm gonna send home with the kids. And we are going to learn a song to the tune of um, The Wise Man and the Foolish Man. So it goes like this. What are some ways Earth's history is preserved? What are some ways Earth's history is preserved? What are some ways Earth's history is preserved? Rocks, fossils, ice, tar, amber. And we'll keep singing that several times. And we're gonna play Duck, Duck, Goose. So I'm gonna have the kids kind of rotate being the ones that pat people's heads gently. <laughs> so we'll sing like they'll pat everybody's has as well sing as we sing the song so like what are some ways Earth's history is preserved what are some ways Earth's history is preserved what are some ways Earth's history is preserved rocks fossils ice tar amber and then once we get to the end amber then the per last person's head that they tap that person will kind of like you know you could have them chase each other if you want. I might just have them like kind of trade spots just to keep it a little bit more um, under control. But you can, you know, either have them just kind of like run around the circle and then sit in that person's spot and then that person gets to do it. So, and then I'll give every person a chance. But I'm gonna play Duck, Duck, Goose and that is what we're gonna do for science. And then for um, review this week, I just like to kind of either give them Play-Doh to play with or give them one of the coloring pages that I mentioned um, from Etsy just to let them wind down. And then I will um, probably play either kind of the Latin song a few times since we're getting towards the end and we're gonna present that for our end of the year time. I'm also thinking we're going to do the States and Capitals song as just our individual class for the end of the year. So I might um, play that too, just to kind of help us remember that. So 
that helps them wind down and I like that because I have little ones and it's a lot for them. So, um, also for presentations for this week, I am planning on having them share with the class one of their favorite things that they learned about school group, learned about in school group this year. So that could be like a thing, a science experiment that we did or an, a great artist that we learned about or any, anything, um, a favorite state that they had, sky's the limit, but something um, that they learned about this past year. So that is it. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.